made sketching recording it. Emma caught me, record, caught me, like it's fucking salacious. Emma caught me uh, recording one of the kazoo things. I think it might have been the latest one, the uh, Careless Whisper one. And she walked in while I was doing it, and the look of genuine shame on her face. <laughs> like, she, I, sitting here with the microphone set up the way it is now, in Audacity, just tooting along with a backing track, like overdubbing myself on fucking Careless Whisper for the fourth time. And I just look over with the kazoo still in my mouth, and Emma's just looking at me from the door, shaking her head. <laughs> It was, it was a tough moment for our relationship. <laughs> oh, lad. That was very funny. There's a clip of Emma discovering that I get paid uh, for Twitch sometimes. Going, oh, lads. <laughs> you can't be taking their money. <laughs> anyway, it's working. Good. I didn't even fucking notice it was working. It's working. Good. Do you have a mirror in front of you while you record? That's what I do. No, I hate mirrors. I have my camera, actually. That's kind of a mirror. Although I think I turn the camera off when I'm doing the uh, the audacity stuff because I don't want to see myself. <laughs> it's times like that, I sometimes think, and my granddad was fighting fascists in the jungle. <laughs> I don't know what any of my... I've never done an ancestry test. I don't know what the fuck my ancestors were doing. I don't. What was my granddad doing uh, at my age? At my age, my granddad was driving drunk on a motorcycle along a country road with 15 people with crates of Guinness. That is what my granddad was doing. He is the, the one who likes Tetris that I was talking about earlier. That is what my granddad was doing. So I'm, I'm probably doing all right. My granddad was chasing skirt, as he would put it. Ooh, that's an old-fashioned weird phrase. Chasing tail. Chasing skirt. Ugh. I'm old enough for him to just tell me. I my granddad is seventy five years old. So when would he have been born? Nineteen, like late forties, like forty eight, something like that. So he would have grown up in Ireland in the fifties. Oh, <laughs> like that. That would have been a grim time. I have heard many stories of my granddad. I mean, not just like getting beaten at school and shit like that, but also, like. Je that is not a joke. He he has never gotten a driving license, but owned a motorbike and lived in rural Waterford. So he would just drive like 15 people, probably like six people on one motorbike, just driving them back from the pub along country roads with no streetlights, just constantly crashing and rolling around. Your granddad is the same age as my mum. My mum is like 53 or something. <laughs> I think my mum's like 52, 53. My, my dad's like 50. I'm 26, so you know. <laughs> no, my mum's not probably like 55. How old's my mum? I don't know. I don't know how old my mum is. Miracle baby, I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, Yeah, anyway, whatever. <laughs> Let's go. I, I think last time we played this, I just got, well, number one, I discovered that I can use the keyboard to walk, which I didn't know. But also, we discovered that the Archdeacon is here. Oh, she was older when she had me. Okay. I don't know what the normal age... I come from Ireland, so it's all fucking skewed. If you didn't have a kid by the age of, like, 20, pr back in the 50s, people would look at you weird, right? So, like, I don't know what the normal age is in other countries. <laughs> Like, if you had... If you didn't have six kids by the time you were 30, people would think something was wrong with you. That's changed now, but it took a while. Right, so we're... I think we need to dig up a body, but I don't know if we're going to be able to. Oh, did we not go to bed? What time is it? Hang on. Open up the map or whatever. What What time is it? Ex Libis. What time is it? I'm a hedonist, an occultist, a doctor, and a narrator. Um, I hear cricket, so it must be... It must be early. Let's go to bed. Fine. It's getting late. I should get some rest. I don't think there's anything else I can do, really. Like, we tried to dig up the body, but he was like, oh, it's you should tie up other things first, so I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Go to sleep. Fuck it. Mm. Mm. Like, I think my dad has seven siblings? Something like that? That seems insane to me now. The thought of having one child fills me with such terror that I don't think I could handle it. Like, it's it's horrific. But it, it was fairly normal to have, like, eight or nine kids. 
now in, in, in Ireland, in like even in the 70s and 80s. Oh, it's some sort of... Oh, I remember we were here at the end of the last thing. Um, seven is a lot, yeah. <laughs> I think it comes from the sort of not all of these will live kind of mentality that took a while to wear off. Not all of these will live and we need farm hens. Ireland was pretty backwards. Well, what am I doing? Oh, it's a maze! And they call it a maze. I think my nan and granddad adopted two kids alongside their existing five. Jesus, they have big hearts, bless them. Actually, my mom is different. My mom only has two siblings. And now three kids is kind of a lot of kids. But my dad, at like eight, so like, Jesus. That and not allowed to use contraception. I don't know if people 100% know this. I think I've mentioned it here. I think contraception only became legal here in like the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, divorce only got legalized in the 90s. So, you know, it was a bit harder to get, I guess. <laughs> my dad has 16 siblings. Oh my God. One second, full camera. This music is slightly irritating, but hang on. My mum has eight. Fuck me, that's a lot of family members. Um, Ireland contraception legality. Um, contraception history. History, maybe. In the mid 19s. Uh, it was illegal up until the 80s. There we go. <laughs> God help you at family gatherings, I know. <laughs> It was illegal until 1980, when it was legalized with strong restrictions that were later loosened. I think you had to get a doctor's appointment to get condoms or something like that. You couldn't buy them. Um, the ban reflected Catholicism, yeah, uh, obviously. Reforms on allowing sales. Um, yeah, it was not good. <laughs> it's not good. Oh yeah, we only legalized abortion like four years ago, Jesus. Anyway, whatever, let's, let's go back. Let's go back to the game. Game and game. You should be seeing it in just a second. It's a maze. A few people on my mum's side, religious family, have five kids, and that seems his dream to me. Yeah, they're all retiring soon. Good stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm an only child. I have one brother. I have a sibling. One sibling. Singular. And that is fine. That is honestly a bit much. I, I would not have any. Um, I'm from a five-child family, but we aren't from religious extremists. <laughs> Let me, okay, I'm assuming we need to get to the middle, right? Which is just this way. Andreas, when are you coming home? Dad, I'll be home soon. I just need to finish this, com uh... I think we're probably getting so focused on this commission because we're worried about getting married. We don't want to get married. We might be gay. Don't worry yourself over it. I barely knew your mother before we were married. Besides, you need a wife if we're going to start a workshop. That's the law. Really? Was it the law? Mum slipped down the stairs into your dad sitting on the toilet. I was an accident, all right. <laughs> I think I was an accident. I'm reasonably sure of it. My mum... <laughs> It, it was a joke, so don't be too mean, but it was a joke. My mum once, uh, I remember she was making pod, uh, pancakes, not podcasts. She was making pancakes one morning, and I walked down, and she was like, <laughs> she said that, you know, you're a bit like when you have a, a, the first pancake of a batch doesn't quite turn out right and you make some mistakes and then you like do better on the previous on the subsequent pancakes <laughs> so i'm pretty sure i was not planned. <laughs> that's the law yes of course you're not going to quit your quit this like you quit university are you oh god it's fucking my parents uh <laughs> no of course not <laughs> this is my response Ha <laughs> ha No, of course not. Good. Oh, it's fucking family gatherings. If it weren't for the work I did for director, you never even would have had this opportunity. Most people never get a second chance after they throw something away like that. I know. Well, see you when you get back. 
All right, fine. Leave me alone. Good, good talk. I'll call you in a couple of years. <laughs> right, get in here, maybe. Oh, it's Sabine. Oh, it's our wife to be. She looks fairly pleasant. She's got the smiley face. Oh, it's you. <laughs> that is that is what every fiance wants to hear when you meet. Oh, it's you. I only have the picture of you, the one my brother Daniel made. I really don't have any idea what you're like. Um, do you really want to get married to a stranger? Why should that matter? Right, everyone keeps saying that. That's why I'm saying it to you now. I'm in your head. My folks got told they couldn't have kids, then I popped. I don't know. A lot of children are not planned. I think that's just a fair thing to say, right? I'd be willing to say about half are not planned. Because I'm saying it to myself. Exactly. Hmm. I'll see you soon, Andreas. For real, I mean. I suppose that's true. Until then. Hmm. I say that to my wife all the time because I'm a nice guy. This is a joke. I love my wife very much. <laughs> oh, we're back here with, who was it? Was this Socrates, Aristotle, Plato? Is one of those. They kind of all merge into one, let's be honest. Emma is doing philosophy right now at university and she even she says that. <laughs> Welcome back, Andreas. It has been too long since you graced this court with your presence. Apologies, your majesty. My mind has been preoccupied by a tragedy at Kirso Abbey. There's been a murder! And this is our dream hut, I guess. Very opulent little dream manner you've got going. What manner of tragedy? The murder of a nobleman, a close friend of the Prince Bishop of Freezing. The old ball and chain, am I right, lads? I frequently call Emma my beautiful wife. And I say that not to be sort of gooey and cloying, but because she fucking hates it. <laughs> she hates when I call her that. So I really like doing it. <laughs> There's been a murder, more rolling oars to be a taggart. I can't roll my oars. I don't know how. People have tried to teach me over the years, but I can't do it. I don't know what, what it means. Like, murder. I, it doesn't work. Just do it. I can't roll my oars. Fuck off. <laughs> is that it? We've noticed you like annoying your partner. I. <laughs> it just kind of sounds like I'm a demented cat trying to purr. Or like that weird George Galloway clip where he's in Big Brother lapping milk out of that woman's lap. <laughs> Whatever. Fuck it. <laughs> My friend, Brother Piero, is the abbot's only suspect. I know that he could not have done it. How do you know? Examine your assumptions, my son. In addition to having no motive and violence, not being part of his character, he's not physically capable of doing it. He's of limited strength and has a palsy in his hand that makes holding a paintbrush difficult. That guy did it, his voice gives it away. <laughs> It's inconceivable that he would. Has anybody said that and not immediately thought of Princess Pride? <laughs> that he would have the strength and resolve to kill the Baron with a blow to the head. He could just drop a big rock on him. Or, like, I don't know. He could rig up some sort of pulley system. <laughs> like a pulley system where, like, he drops something from above. You could do it. You could figure it out. He's a monkey. He's got learning in his brain. Can't remember if I've seen Princess Bride or Robin Hood Men in Tights or both. One is really good. One of them is really bad. <laughs> right? Robin Hood Men in Tights is a really... It's a hard watch. It's not a great movie. It's very unfunny. Um, and I like Carrie Elwes. And then Princess Bride is probably one of my favourite movies of all time. I love that movie so much. Although I don't know if that's mainly because of nostalgia or not. I don't, like, Emma really, really likes it, but she never watched it as a kid, and so she likes it less than me. I think a large part of it is just because I watched it so much as a kid. 
I love Princess Bride. I love Princess Bride so much. I, I laugh so hard every time I watch it. It's weird. It's one of those movies where every time I watch it, I go into it think thinking, oh, it's not going to be as funny as I remember. And then I laugh even harder than I laughed the previous time. I love it. Princess Bride is so bad. No. <laughs> oh, I've watched it so many times. Never watched it. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> We watched it a while ago because we heard so much about it. We hated it. It was not good. It might just be nostalgia. I'm not going to deny it. It might be nostalgia that I watched it so much as a kid. But I, oh, I mean, Peter Falk is a friendly granddad. I wish Peter Falk was a friendly granddad with me. Um, just, oh, uh, Carrie Elways is so funny. That whole uh, Inigo Montoya plot is so good. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> it's inconceivable that we would have the strength and resolve to kill the Baron with a blow to the head. Mel Brooks? Is Mel Brooks in that movie? I don't think Mel Brooks is in that movie, is he? I don't think... And he didn't direct it. I don't think he directed Robin Hood Men in Tights either. It's kind of a Mel Brooks-like movie. I don't know if I really like Mel Brooks as much as the general population. I don't think Young Frankenstein is that funny. Blazing Saddles is. Blazing Saddles is one of the greatest movies of, ever ti of, of all time. But... Uh, Young Frankenstein and some of the producers I don't really like either. I find that kind of bad. Men in Tights is, isn't it? I, it might be. Mel Brooks is in Robin Hood's Men in Tights and he usually has cameos in his movies. Hang on. Men in Tights. Don't just give me images of Men in Tights. It is giving me images of Men in Tights. It has 41% on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. That is accurate, I would say. <laughs> um, Written and directed by Mel Brooks. Okay, there we go. It is Mel Brooks. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's a bad movie. <laughs> anyway, let's, uh, go back over to this. Oh, what the fuck was St. Grobian's voice again? A whole lot of inconceivable shit happens on this hell of an earth, Andreas. Python films have to be the best comedy films of all time? I think I could probably recite Monty Python, Holy Grail, word for word. <laughs> I could... If you asked me to rewrite the script of um, Monty Python's Holy Grail, I could probably do it with about 75% accuracy. Didn't really hold up even when it was released, to be fair. It's not good. Anyway. <laughs> a whole lot of inconceivable shit happened on this hell of an earth, Andrea. I just don't believe he could have done it. There has to be a better explanation. I don't deny it's impossible, but I believe it's improbable. I'm, I'm with this one. The entire premise of the producers is haha ha, Hitler musical and then you don't even see most of the musical. It's just not funny. And I think Gene Wilder is hilarious. And I think Mel Brooks can be funny. But fuck me, the producers is a comedy void. It's really unfunny. I just, we watch it. Emma and I watched it. I'm just stone-faced the entire fucking time. Really not good. Um, and I know it's a classic. But again, I think if you didn't watch it as a kid, maybe you don't like it. Springtime for Hitler is funny. That, that's that's maybe the one bit I laughed at. Springtime for Hitler and Germany. That's kind of funny. But like, and the dancing Nazis. But other than that, it's very fucking bad. It's very sort of old, tiny vaudeville, which can be funny, but it just feels like a variety act. There's a lot of like dumb songs in it. Legendary figure said to have founded a kingdom in India and later thought to be Ethiopia, but he never existed. Praetor John? I don't know of this. Different generation, Mel Brooks doesn't speak to us so much. I think Blazing Saddles is genuinely fucking hilarious. Like, we watched Blazing Saddles recently after watching The Producers and Young Frankenstein, which I don't really like. And then um, we watched Blazing Saddles thinking that it was going to be the same thing because I'd never seen it. Um, or maybe I'd seen bits and pieces of it over the years. But I was, um, I watched... We watched Raising Saddles right afterwards, or maybe a week later, thinking that it was just going to be very dated and not going to be very fun or anything like that. And it was honestly some of the most I've laughed in years. I thought it was so fucking funny. That bit where Gene Wilder is like, you know, fucking morons. I was so funny. <laughs> anyway, I saw the producers when I was 16 for the first time and nearly pissed myself laughing. I remember liking... Young Frankenstein when I was very young as well. And then I watched it recently and I didn't like it at all. I thought it was really unfunny. 
Maybe just me. I just hate musicals with a deep burning passion. I also don't like musicals. I know there's a lot of people. This is my shoot again. <laughs> that I, oh, it's so fucking funny. It, it is baffling. The reason it was on my mind, I think, why, why this is brought up, is that um, I saw another conservative missing the point of Mel Brooks recently. Where Blazing Saddles is about as anti-racist and woke as you can get. I hate using that fucking word. But it's about as woke as you can get. It is a progressive movie. There is some jokes that wouldn't fly today. Obviously, it's from the 80s. But overall, its heart is in the right place and it has some really funny bits. I mean, there's a bit of, like, the KKK in it are fucking, you know, like, the KKK are villains in it and raises the villains in it. It's just a funny movie, right? But conservatives like to go, you couldn't make Blazing Saddles today. It's, you know, the woke Hollywood elite wouldn't, you know, let it be made. It's like, have you ever actually watched the fucking movie? You're the villains in it. Are you fucking dumb? Are you dumb? That's not the proper use of the word anyway. I know. The word woke is... Anybody who unironically uses the word woke is going to be a bad person, right? Also, hello, Rosie. Welcome. This is my shooting. It's so fucking funny. Anyway, whatever. I'll stop talking about Blazing Saddles. In general, though, I don't really like Mel Brooks that much. I think Mel Brooks uh, is very dated. Very dated comedy. Even in Blazing Saddles. Again, it's from the 80s. So there's going to be some weird shit. Right? But, like, aside from that, aside from any tonally inconsistent stuff, I'm just kind of like, these just aren't funny. They are dumb. They used Fortunate Son as a Republican song. Fortunate Son and Born in the USA. It's like, oh, it's my father's song. Thank you, Rosie. That's extremely kind of you. Never, ever, ever expectation to sub or give bits on this channel, but thank you. Yes, Born in the USA. It's like they've never listened to these songs. They just, they listen to the chorus, go, Born in the USA, and go, yeah, cool, Trump, I'll use that. Fucking insane. Ooh, shiny corner. <laughs> thank you, Grim. <laughs> I, lo I like getting one bit donations because it feels like somebody coming up and throwing a penny at me. It's great. <laughs> yeah, Fortunate Son as well. It's it's bizarre that I think media literacy is at, at an all time low. And I think it's always been bad, but media liter literacy is really bad and it's noticeable because of social media. And I think... For some reason, the right wing have even less media literacy than the general population. They do not understand what the fuck is going on in things they listen to or watch. Anyway, I do not deny that it is possible, but I believe it is extremely improbable. So what do you intend to do about it? They don't critically think. When I'm brought before the Archdeacon, I'll tell him what I know about other people who had motives to kill the Baron. It's Emma and I were talking about this recently. That, like, we were talking about Breaking Bad and The Godfather, right? And how a lot of people, Emma didn't like Breaking Bad, right? A lot of people didn't like, uh, uh, Emma didn't like Breaking Bad because she was sold it by her ex as a good man goes bad, right? Completely missing the point that the entire point of Breaking Bad, like Macbeth, and like Godfather, which also so had the same selling point, like Michael is a good man gone bad Thanks in that fucking comments. thing, I'll right? Well. Um, <laughs> here's some Tory bits. Thank you, Fitz. That's very kind of you. Um, you know, it's all a good man gone bad kind of thing. They're all fucking awful people at the very beginning, and it's them going worse. And it's a horrible misreading of the texts. Like, it's... It's really, like, it, it feels like people do not understand what they're watching sometimes. Like, if you watch Godfather, Godfather Part 1, Michael is a bad person. He's a petty freak. At the st From the second that movie starts, you can tell he's not right. Breaking Bad, that, that show starts, and from the first 20 minutes, you can tell this is a fucking awful, borderline incel fucking prick. Like, he's a horrible person, and he gets worse and worse as it goes on. And again, they're all retellings of Macbeth, basically. And Macbeth is an awful person from the start. He's very easily swayed. He wants to do these things. It just feels like people just take things at face value without reading into them. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Rant over. When brought before the Archdeacon, I'll tell him what I know about other people who had motives to kill the Baron. Yeah, but you haven't got much, have you? 
Walter White is meek at home, but he's egotistical and abusive to Jesse from those examples. Exactly. He's like a fucking... He's, he's like... And I don't like this phrase either, but he's like the fucking... The stereotype of like the beta male misogynist, like watching uh, fucking Big Bang Theory, where they're all fucking pricks, where he's like meek and nerdy, but he's just as fucking toxic and horrible as everybody else. It's just portrayed in a different way. And when he's portrayed next to some of the worst people in the show, people just sort of take it at face value and go like, oh, he's the good guy. It's like, what is wrong with you? Are you all right? Have you ever, have you ever read a book? Oh my god. Someone said it was a great example of older adults grooming younger ones. I agree with that as well. Anyway, whatever. That's that's my rant. It's just very bad. As someone who was in a cult that made a lot of sense for me. Jesus Christ. Let's go eat some babies. Does a recurring sub count towards a hype train? I have no idea. I don't really know how hype trains work, but thank you for the resub. That's very kind of you. Um, I've never been in a cult unless you count Catholicism, although I was never really raised Catholic, so it doesn't really make sense. Like, my grandparents are Catholic, but didn't really give a fuck what anybody else did. And my parents are agnostics at best. So, like, eh, said it was once of a way worth a try. Well, thank you for the resub. That's very kind of you. You get all my trashy emotes if you sub. Like that, like the Prime ad said. What did, what did my Prime ad say? It was like kawaii little emotes or whatever the fuck I had it on. One second. Remind me. Cute little emotes. There we go. And you get lots of cute little emotes to play with. So kawaii. And it all comes so kawaii. Could you leave it out massive consequences? Yes. So it wasn't a cult. Like, um. I know Scientology is trying to. That's definitely a cult. I know Scientology is trying to worm its way into Irish schools recently, which is in, uh, like, fucking bizarre to me. But um, they've been, like, donating school books and stuff with Scientology undertones, trying to get a new market. And I don't think the Catholic Church are particularly happy about it, and I don't think anyone else is either. But, you know, Scientologists, they've got a lot of money. Um, I don't really know much about cults, if I'm totally honest. Anyway, I'll stop talking about cults, probably. <laughs> when I'm brought before the Archdeacon, thank you for the bit. 20 pennies thrown at me. They do have a bunch of centres in Australia. I've never seen one. Oh no, Ross and Carrie podcast is a great start. That's on the Maximum Fun channel, isn't it? I constantly hear ads when I'm listening to other podcasts on that uh, network, if they're still on that. I think I have heard ads for that show on like three or four different things that I've listened to. And I've always thought it sounds fun. So I might start listening to it. Ooh, <laughs> Stop giving coin. me pennies. <laughs> Stop it. Even that much makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, they do have a bunch of centres in Australia. Wow. I remember there being a place in Sheffield, but I don't know if they could afford to keep that up. Is there any? One second. I'm going to type in site Scientology Centre Ireland. Scientology. Oh, I can't spell. Scientology Centre Ireland. Church of Scientology. There is a community center in Dublin. In Tala, Dublin. Uh, in the Fur House. Church of Scientology and community center of Dublin. ScientologyDublin.ie oh, So there is one. There's a Scientology place in Edinburgh. My God. What does this look like? Is it nice? <laughs> Whoa, fuck me. Right, my, uh, my ring light just fell over and it... Fucking terrified me. Hang on, let's see if I can live do this. There we go. It's not the most stable thing I've ever put up, but it's fine for now. I'll fix that later. Um, maps. Maps, please. What does this look like? Uh, give me... How do I do Street View again? Uh, it's the little man, isn't it? It's the little man right here. There we go. It's the little man. I know you're not seeing anything. I think this, yeah, this is it. This is the Scientology Centre in Dublin. It's actually not big, is it? It's actually fairly... They're not Dublin down then. Oof, oof. It's actually quite small. I was expecting bigger, considering it's Scientology. It's actually, like, just kind of a small cafe-looking place. <laughs> used to be called L. Ron Hubbard Centre Center for Personal Improvement years back, but they dropped the act and now it's just called Scientology. I tried to get into Scientology for a laugh. What? It's amazing how quickly they get to talking about your income and how they didn't have time for little old broke me. Oh, it's like when you get a robocall or a survey or something and clearly there's more questions coming, but you clearly don't make enough. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, what is your, you know, 
income bracket or something. It's like this much. And they go, okay, thanks. And then hang up. It's like, oh, there was more questions, but I don't own, I don't have enough money to put a down payment on a house or something. There are massive buildings in every major city. Really? I have no idea. <laughs> Thank you for the clip. <laughs> I like this sort of ambience in the background while I'm looking around Dublin. I don't really go to Dublin much. I don't really have reason to, because, you know, the biggest thing they have is property. I imagine that's how they make most of their money, right? It's just sort of leasing land. They don't have a massive building, just some upper offices here. I mean, this just looks like some random business park area of Dublin. I don't know this area, basically. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's go away from this. Let's go back to the game. Their entrance is innocuous. I, oh, I, I've i never tried to get in, to be honest. Apparently the South Park episode really broke them, though. Some, South Park did something good. Really? South Park did something, like, good and not horrific? That's hard to believe. But <laughs> This stream by accident, sure. <laughs> like, I fucking hate South Park. I have always hated South Park. This stream title, I couldn't really think of anything to write. <laughs> Me too. Oh, I even when everybody loved South Park, even as a kid, and I was an edgy fucking twat as a kid, I bought this fedora completely unironically when I was 14, right? I, I bought this unironically, thought it was cool. I bought a fedora. That's how much of a prick I was as a kid. I, even I thought that South Park was fucking edgy trash. I hated South Park. When I'm brought before the Archdeacon, Archdeacon, I'll tell him what I know about other people who have motives to kill the Baron. I have to believe he'll see there are much more likely suspects than Piero. Why have you taken this task upon yourself? I just like the idea that Socrates speaks like that. I have to save Brother Piero's life. He has no one else to help him. Hmm. I want to find the real killer. I Yeah, Pier we like Piero. Although do I really care about a monk? Do I really care about a Catholic monk? Let's be honest. Yeah, we want to find the real killer. I think that's that's probably fair. That sounds fine. That That's good for everybody, right? Although, what are they going to do with him? The Archdeacon must be a man of learning. Do you think he is capable of discovering the truth? I watched a quiz yesterday. Oh, and Socrates was on the answers. I was watching the Yogscast charity streams yesterday. And they're doing like a parody of University Challenge. And no one in the... Eight people during the quiz at that round. And not one of them knew Socrates. I was actually... I was tearing my fucking hair out. <laughs> I was like, oh, how are you? Why? <laughs> they even made it easier. They said like, featured in Bill and Ted. And I was like, it's fucking Socrates. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, Socrates. <who? laughs> so great. Some of the dumbest shit heads in Christendom are judges. Father of Western Wash, I know. Um, oh, by the way, go check out some, if you if you have any interest in charity stuff, I'd recommend checking out the Jingle Jam stuff that the Yogscast are doing. There are some fantastic, I was briefly affiliated with them. I didn't raise much, but a little bit last year. Um, now I'm just kind of shouting them out a bit because a couple of members of the Yogscast follow me and I like them. I've been watching them since I was a kid. And they're raising cool money for cool charities. I think they hit like two and a half million or something. Um, I think they're doing mermaids and special effect and uh, grand appeal and whale and dolphin conservation and lots and lots of others. So, you know, maybe go check that out at some point. Is Socrates the one who lived in a bin and told Alexander to piss off or something? That was Diogenes? I think that's Diogenes. He lived in a barrel. Uh, soiled himself a lot and told Alexander the Great to get out of his son. <laughs> yes, I like Diogenes. Diogenes is the one that said, in the house of a rich man, the only place to spit in is his face. <laughs> Which is, I think that's Diogenes, and that might be my favourite quote in all of history. It's fucking great. <laughs> Love the OG Bill and Ted films. Last one was well it happened at least. I love the first two Bill and Ted movies. Especially the first one. But um, the third one is there. It's fine. It's, it's, I thought it was alright but not particularly good. Diogenes is parodied in Pratchett I think. He might be. I haven't read all of Pratchett. I've read a decent amount of Pratchett. I like Pratchett a lot. I like um, especially the Night's Watch cycle. You know the stuff with Sam Vimes. 
That's probably my favorite Pratchett stuff, but I just generally like Pratchett. Anyway. <laughs> Some of the dumbest shitheads in Christendom are judges. For all Andreas knows, this archdeacon may not be able to tell his head from his arsehole. That's my fear, that no matter what evidence I present, Piero's fate may already be sealed. It's modern day. <laughs> Why does that shit for brain Nabbit care about the death of a useless fart like Lorenz Throckvogel anyway? It feels like maybe blackmail. Powerful people get upset when other powerful people are murdered. Oh no! The Abbey! Who gives a shit about those hypocritical assholes? In any case... In any case, Andreas' ability to prevent Piero's death depends on the judgement of the Archdeacon. War is all foolish, corrupt or just. The Archdeacon will be the first and possibly final arbiter of Piero's guilt. Andreas must win the Archdeacon to his side, using the tools favoured by men such as him. Small boys? <laughs> it's none of these. Reason? Ah, what's the last time you met a man who was truly ruled by reason? Authority. Despite your talent, you are merely an artist. He has been invested with power by the Prince Bishop of Freezing. You have no authority with him. Wisdom? Wisdom can be shared, but the audience may not comprehend it. Honesty? <laughs> Yeah, right. Sorry, that's... Again, I watch Limmy's streams, and that, that is now in my brain forever. The fucking... Which one is it? Which child actor? Corey... Is it Corey Haim? It might be Corey Haim did that song. That terrible, terrible single called Honesty. You must be... You must be honest in all things, Andreas, but many are not willing to accept the truth. Was it Feldman? It might be Feldman. There's two of them and they're the same in my brain. And the cost of honesty can be high. If reason, wisdom, authority and honesty cannot triumph, what am I left with? A, a stabbing knife? Hope. Rebellions are built on hope. Oh, I'm not a Star Wars fan. <laughs> Lie. That one's more practical. Truth. Above all, faith in providence. Well, what do you plan to tell the Archdeacon, Andreas? There were other people in Cursa and Tassing who had motives. Sister Matilda was badly beaten on the Baron. We're fucking ignoring that. For resisting his advances. Advances. She almost died. She's getting off either way. Like, if she did it or not, we're not telling. <laughs> right? Why was the Baron not punished for it? Oh, you fool. Uh, it seems the Baron was beyond the reach of justice, at least at the time. Mother Cecilia sent M Sister Matilda away to a hermitage to recover away from the rest of the nuns. Just seal her in a room. How did you come to this understanding? We asked her. I crept into the Abbey's library after dark and invest- Oh yeah, we- that, there was that whole sex bit, I forgot. <laughs> Investigated the nuns' admittance records to learn the sister's name. Once I knew the name, I confronted Matilda, and she told me what happened. You risked a great deal by trespassing in the library. Hello, pig. Pig. Hello, pig. You okay? What are you doing? Are you, are you chewing a wire in front of me? Yeah, that's right. Go away. <laughs> you risked a great deal by trespassing in the library. Right, Andreas might have seen the monks and nuns fucking. Scandalous behaviour. We did. In fact, we were in one of them. Not that Andreas would know anything about that. <laughs> Lorenz could, couldn't get his way with a nun and he almost killed her for it. I wish I could say it's surprising. Sister Matilda's motive is a powerful one, but by what means might she have killed the Baron? I haven't found a plausible weapon yet. Motive alone will not convince the Archdeacon. You must find a plausible weapon she could have employed. 
Are there any others you suspect? Frank is my main one. Fr Frank feared the Baron would report his occult interests. How so? Prior Frank and the Baron shared a fascination with occult texts. The Baron was pressuring the Prior into performing a ritual for him while he was visiting Kursau. When Frank refused, the Baron threatened to turn him into the Inquisition. That seems fair. I found written evidence, a letter from Frank to the Baron, which he discusses all of these matters. It's a danger. It's a dangerous thing. A monk dabbling in the occult. His very soul could be in danger. Forget the foul. He could have been defrocked, excommunicated and killed. All for a little curiosity. Better to say stupid and ignorant, that's what I say. We're well aware. I like this guy. Hmm. All of this worry over dangerous books started in the University of Paris. It shouldn't even be an issue over here. Is that a thing? I th apparently, this game is very historically accurate, but I don't really know anything about history. Whether the proclamation was made by a bishop of Paris or by the Pope himself, the danger remains. Prior Ferenc feared loss of his status, his life, and even God's grace. Men have killed for less. How might the prior have accomplished the deed? I'm not certain. I haven't found anything that I think could be used as a weapon. I'm sure there could have been something in that fucking grave. Were we too late? Should we have been doing more? Like, could we have dug up the grave earlier, maybe? Fuck. I mean... Boo, where's I'm a Hello, it's Ira. Welcome. <laughs> it would be a challenge to convince the Archdeacon that a prior committed a murder this foul. If you let me dig up the body, I might find something. Maybe a bone is missing and he just fucking clubbed him to death with a femur. If you mean to suggest that Ferenc is a suspect, you must find a weapon to convince him. Are there any others you suspect? Lucky, maybe? I found no other suspects. This is, Lucky's kind of a suspect. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> you have brought a worthy mystery before this court, Andreas. I pray to God we have granted you the insight you need to face the coming challenge. Find murder weapon. Thank you, Your Majesty. I'm prepared to meet the day. I'm not. Before you go, Andreas, there's one more thing to consider. You will be summoned to the Archdeacon to tell him what you know. But you need not tell him everything. I, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> There is a place for a noble lie. This is not one of them. Shut up, Socrates. Shut up. Go, um... Oh, see, now I'm showing my ignorance. Is he the one who ate hemlock and died? Is he the one who was forced into suicide? Or was that Aristotle? I can't remember. Why? The Baron is dead. All of the people with a motive to kill him... It was Socrates, thank you. All of the people with a motive to kill him suffered, either directly or indirectly, from his wickedness. Simply mentioning a name to the Archdeacon may endanger him, whether they had anything to do with the murder or not. For corrupting the youth, that was it, and he was blasphemy and stuff like that. They made him eat hemlock. Or drink hemlock in a wine or something? Yeah, they gave him hemlock. Right, no point in throwing everyone waist deep into it. Drink, there we go. I'm learning. I protest any attempt at deception, but you must ultimately follow your own conscience, Andreas. Little time remains before you must stand before the Archdeacon. Use it windless, wisely. When do you bang these two? I don't know if I want to bang any of these people. I'm not into beards. And they all have beards. Well, except that woman. But her, nah, not really into that either. Aren't these dream figures? They are. You can have sexual dreams. You can bang them any time. Okay, time for the end of the dream and they just all strip off. Socrates and me. Mm. Little remains before you must stand before the Archdeacon. I will do my best. Until we meet again, Andreas. God be with you. And also with you, Your Majesty. Right, we need to dig up that fucking corpse. We really badly need to drink through the corpse. I think we're going... When are we meeting the Archdeacon? Um, time to get back to work. The Archdeacon we are meeting at... 
Nones, which is later. So right now, go to fucking... Oh, hello, Ursula. Kick. Fucking smack across the face. Don't speak to me. Hello, you. Clara, I gave you the money and I never got to talk to you about it. Hey. Hello, Andreas. That's the one voice I can do. Hello, Andreas. I found a rather full pouch of coin on our table this morning. I thought you might have left it. I did. It's for you. Andreas. This is far more than your rent payment. We can't accept this. Uh, I insist. It's enough to pay back the effort, yes? It is, but a dress. Do you even get so much coin? I'm sure you have enough to spare. I am an accomplished wine slot. I can get money any way I like. Accomplished. Uh, I, I'll be fine. She doesn't need to know. Oh, well, if you're sure. Drops a big bag of coins in cleavage. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Andreas. You don't know what this means to us. Uh, happy to help, sure. You're a good man, Andreas. Thank you. I'll let you move in. Move on with your day. God bless you. Until later. Uh, what about you? Have you fucked the boy yet or something? Whatever your, your plot was. Hello, Andreas. Morning. I hope the day is treating you well. Well enough, though there's still too much to do, and not enough hours to do it all. The storm made such a mess of the town, and there's the leaks in the roof at home, and then there's all that wool, Lord. What's this about wool? The ewes are near to lambing, so we sheared them last week. Must have spent ages washing all that wool. Have you ever smelled wet, dirty wool, Andreas? Ah, oh, there's nothing worse. Uh, now that it's clean, we got to spin it, and that takes an age all on its own. Lord, I don't know where I'll find the time. How do medieval people not have enough hours? They don't have Netflix to distract them. Won't Clara help you? Certainly. <laughs> Sometimes I forget you're from Nuremberg, Andreas. You and your city ways. Clara, Hedy, Veronica, Cut, even Ursula will be there, though she makes mischief more than she helps. They have neck ticks to distract them instead. That is a, an irritatingly good pun. Because <laughs> I, I find puns psychically damaging. At least the work goes quickly with the women working together. Lively conversation helps pass the time. And you know how women are. We're always nettering on about some shit. Sometimes we even get visitors. Sexual visitors. I could be a visitor. Don't you let Clara talking to me like that. <laughs> Too bad other men in this turn won't follow your example. I haven't had an orgasm in years. You're welcome to come, though. I'm sure the others will be glad of your company, too. Joe Bauer will be there to keep an eye on us. As long as you stay outside, can't wait to see... I can't see what arm you visit it will cause. I'll consider it. Come on. Everyone will be glad to see you mingling. Medieval people were extremely horny. Again, I can't imagine. It's because there was less to do, right? Like a lot of the time, you'd just be bored and cold at night. So what else is there to do? You didn't have many books around. Didn't have television. I think the birth rate does go down the more televisions a country has. I remember reading that. It's far too smooth. Had to look at the screen to see if that was a line or not. <laughs> Everyone will be glad to see you mingling with regular folk. Eddie especially. She worries you think too early of yourself. She called you a prick the other day. We meet at John Bower's home. Come by in the morning or afternoon to speak to Johan. I said John the other day. I could get back to work. It was a pleasure running into you, Andreas. Oh, the pleasure was entirely mine. Speaking of spinning wool, <laughs> no, that doesn't, that doesn't, 
That does not really work. You relentless flirt. Keep your voice down. I took a shears to it the other day. Sorry. Gertner Farm. <laughs> Let's go out, please. Please get me out. Um, attend the bee. I don't know if I want to go to a spinning bee. <laughs> I'd be getting at everyone until they banished me to outside the city walls. <laughs> Peter, you're horrible, right? Andreas, okay. What about oh, ill Peter? God oh, bless ya. And what about Big Yorg or whatever your name was? Big Yorg. I like Big Yorg. Ay, ay. Hello, Andreas. <laughs> That's not Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yay, I'm coming. You say hello to the girls today. Even Clara? No, I mean the chickens, Peter. James and John. They like it when you stroke their backs or give them a good scratch under their breasts. <laughs> Sorry. Saying under their breast is wholesome. Saying under their breasts is bad. You named your chickens after the apostles? You couldn't think of anything more feminine? Maybe the names of pretty girls you know? Oh, we're such a horrible prick. I, I'm coming... <laughs> All the pretty girls I know are married. Naming a chicken after another man's wife doesn't seem right. But I hear about the apostles every Sunday in Mass. They witness Jesus' greatest moments of glory and his darkest trials. Say it under your own breasts, Big George. And I was thinking, that's how it is with the girls and me. They see everything I deal with around here. That makes perfect sense to me, Big York. You, you have much in common with Christ. I like Big Yorg. I'm going to encourage Big Yorg. Nothing bad can come of this. <laughs> You're making fun. It's fine. I get it. No, I'm not. I like you. I'll just call them girls from now on. No! I don't recall your family eating eggs. What do you, what do, you do with all of them? Oh, we sell them to the Bowers. Jack Bauer. He tortures people. Clara said we need the extra money for taxes. Anyway, I should get back to it. Until later, Andreas. No, I've upset York. Pretty sure the nuns would say, fuck, Jamir is here. <laughs> well, goodbye, York. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Right, this way. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Andreas. Okay, that's nothing. Right, we want to talk to... Is it this boy over here? Is he in here? The Zimmerman house? We want to go into the Zimmerman house. We need him to dig up the fucking body. You, dig up the body, please. Ready to dig up that grave? It's going to take a few hours. Yes. Yes, finally. We're digging up the body. Fantastic. Now, I need to go to the bathroom as well, or else my bladder might explode. So I'll be back in about, I don't know, a minute, maybe. I, I never get to use this. I'm going to use my break screen. There we go. I know everybody was dying to know. My mic does yeah, my mic works on the screen. There we go. And find the one I was <laughs> If there was an anime called Milk Prep, that's probably something I I don't remember saying that at all, and that's a fairly recent one. I have no idea what that is from. Irish yelling. <laughs> Can't find the one I was thinking of. What one are you thinking of? 
Anyway, there we go. <laughs> what the fuck is that noise? I've put on like spooky noises or like radio noises and music and stuff on this break screen. You can hold it in, you held it in for 10 years. Oh yes, w where is this game located? This game is located in like Southern Bavaria, maybe? Oh, the ghost is waiting, yeah. I put in some spooky ones just because I found it funny. It's not funny, but I found it funny. This took, I think this graphic here took about I'm gonna say four minutes to make <laughs> all of these, so, you know. I don't put a lot of effort into this stream. Let's go back to the game. There we go. You should be seeing it in a second. Oh, we're going. There we go. Thank you! Dig up this body. Oh, I'm lounging rather seductively on that grave. You recently said that about anime, I remember. I, I was probably talking about the uncomfortable prevalence of um, underage characters that are meant to be sexual in anime. It seems like uh, uh, most animes I watch, and I don't watch anime, but a couple of times, a couple of times that I've watched anime recently, it's been all fine and good, and then we just kind of get into some weird shit. Sorry, this stream is, it's not funny, but Treya found it funny and subjected us to it. That is all of my starting soon music. I don't know why the craft part came into it. Yes, exactly. Actually, they aren't underage. They're about 4,000 years old. They're actually a demon, an ancient dragon. And they uh, took the form of a 12-year-old high schooler because that's just what they preferred. So actually, it's weird that you're making it about that. Sorry, I don't like anime <laughs> very much. So, Town Carpenter. What's that like? Exhausting. Not unlike this here. We could be helping, that's fair. <laughs> Satisfying, too. To make things with my hands. To feel the sun on my neck. And the sap under my fingers. Starts off fine and then turns completely fucking weird when we're talking about sounding and fornicating spiders. I have not mentioned sounding in a while. Now, I did mention, like, piercing the tip of a penis earlier at the start of the stream. But that that isn't sounding. <laughs> that's slightly different. Oh no. <laughs> Satisfying too. Like um like a Capri Sun. If it's sort of healed over the top of a penis and you had to like get the straw that pointed straw from a Capri Sun and just kinda go mm, into the top of it to kinda open it back up. Satisfying the sound was bad. Fucking hell. <laughs> the subject was bad. The movement was bad. <laughs> That's one of the more unpleasant things I've said. I like. <laughs> and I haven't fallen off a roof yet. So all in all, I can't complain. Uh, whew, do you, did you want to be a carpenter? It hadn't ever crossed my mind that I'd do anything else. It's been zero days since Jaya mentioned sounding. <laughs> I was always going to do what my father did. How else would I have learned? Oh yeah, these are peasants. We are very privileged, is basically the vibe. <laughs> but I like being a carpenter. It's necessary work. Keeps me talking to everyone in town and aware of what's troubling them. Many people in Tassing are struggling, Andreas. The peasants, especially. Uh, aren't the peasants always? Isn't that what being a peasant is? We need a sounding talk counter. Uh, uh. Emma walked in and they immediately started screaming. That was the guinea pigs. I remember that one. I heard as much from Clara. They used to be able to pay a portion of their taxes and crops, but the abbot put an end to that. Oh, well, fuck him. Now if they get a bad price from a miller, they don't have enough to pay the abbey. That's exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about. We should invent some sort of social-ism. <laughs> the abbot might own the land, but he doesn't work it. He just reaps the benefits of others' efforts. But it's not just him. The law. Imperial law. That's what gives him the power. So maybe the laws have to change? I had no idea it was so bad. My family are all artists. We go slutting around Belgium every summer. <laughs> That's my backstory, genuinely. You're from Nuremberg, right? Well, well away from the peasants' problems. I'd be surprised if you did know. 
Good thing you came to testing. You can get a real education in how the world works. Anyway, I should get back to digging. It's gonna take a while. This is all on my own. Hint, hint. <laughs> can you imagine what a Spotify wrapped of Drea's stream this year would look like? <laughs> you talked about grave robbing 400 times. <laughs> Right, are you just gonna... Are we just gonna chill out and watch? Can we help? I feel bad doing this. Oh, this is... Oh, are we Are we just wandering around? I feel like we're gonna get caught here. Uh, what about you? Peter, Math Peter Matthias de Geneva Abbas. Uh... I'm always really bad at Roman numerals. Oh, I remember this. It was when he got a cum cannon. <laughs> he spent three hours talking about spider genitalia. It was at most like 15 minutes. And I never actually learned. Hang on. Spider. Fitterus. No. Nothing's coming up. It's all about spider monkey clitorises. Clitori? Clitorati? The Clitorati. That's my name for women now. <laughs> Cis women to me are now called the Clitorati. <laughs> Fuck off, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Pseudo penis in spider monkeys. <laughs> for fuck's sake, we're going back to spider. Well, this is about spider monkeys. The pseudo penis. I know that hyenas have a. You can't say that. I know. <laughs> the pseudo penis is on hyenas. I know. Is it on spider monkeys as well? Good for them. Um. Yes. The 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 diagram on Wikipedia is a hyena. Some birds have it. Some insects have a pseudo penis. And apparently spider monkeys do. Right. What am I doing? <laughs> The Vagina Museum. Who I think... Do I follow this? I think I do follow the Vagina Museum. Absolutely nobody. Nothing. Us. We're going to tell you all about spider monkey clitorises. Apparently it's clitorises. Um, because you deserve to know this. Spider monkeys, they don't have much sexual dimorphism. Looking at a spider monkey, especially from a distance, it's difficult to tell. The females have a clitoris so big that it's called a pseudopenis. Here's a picture of a spider monkey clitoris. Oh, oh my. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, good for them. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> they're also known as penduluses, as pendulous clitorises, because they're pendulous as fuck. This is a museum typing this. <laughs> In some species, they're bigger than the male's penis. Good for them. Um... Skin folds. Sexy scents. Grabbing the clitoris. Right, this is a very comprehensive thread. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's go back to the game, shall we? <laughs> Follow the vagina museum. <laughs> Let's go back here. Oh, Father Matthias is here. Matthias. I keep saying Matthias. With a wooden headstone, too. Things must be worse for the Abbey than I thought. He might have wanted that, I don't know. <laughs> Can I offer a Gandalf update in this trying time? He's in a cuddly mood. 1450 to 1517. Okay. I'm always bad at reading these. Like, at the end of movie credits and stuff, they'll come up. And I'm, I never quite know. I'm, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> I'll pseudo-penis you in a minute. With a wooden headstone, too. Things must be worse for the Abbey than I thought. Shouldn't Ab shouldn't Abbots be buried with more marble? Maybe he was very humble. I like how it just says hi. I know we learned what that means in Latin earlier, but I just like that it says hi. The rest of the Abbots are in the crypt, or under the church. I took a look at them while inspecting the foundations with Endress. Kirsau is built on top of an old Roman fort. Not cheap to maintain by any means. Uh... Surely they can do... Still, I'm surprised the Abbey doesn't have enough to pay for a new tomb. They are fucking milking people. M is a thousand. D is five hundred. See, I never know what D means. C is a hundred, I know. L is fifty. I always forget that. And then I know X, V, uh, and I. 
It's not a great system of counting, is it, to be honest? <laughs> I prefer Arabic numerals. Arabic numerals. We really hit on something good as a species there. I heard the abbot and the prior arguing back when I repaired the scriptorium roof. Whatever problems Kearsau's having, they've been going on a while. I never remember Roman numerals. Oh yeah, it doesn't have a zero, so it has a problem because of that. The, the, uh, that only came later, the concept of zero, didn't it? Like, Arabic new like, Arabia, Arab, the Arab societies, they basically invented modern maths, right? And part of that was the concept of zero, because that didn't exist in a lot of earlier cultures. Oh, Jesus. Just, like, weirdly twanged a, str a spring there on my microphone. <laughs> Sorry if that echoed. Right, are we done? Looking at more graves, maybe? This is the founder of the church, I remember. Let's read this one. Frater Jacobus. Jacob? Brother Jacob from Cologne. Did you ever meet him? We spoke a couple of times. He was a funny man. Just about the only one of these monks with a sense of humor. A funny monk. I'm sad to have missed him. I mean... I don't mean to be rude, but you are all Germans in this game, so I don't know if you can talk. <laughs> That's a stereotype, I'm aware. <laughs> a funny monk. I'm sad to have missed what the fuck. <laughs> Pseudo penis segueing into origins of many mathematics. This place is hell. <laughs> if a lower numeral comes before higher, it means to take it away. MCG is 1400. See, it's it sucks. They, they made it way too complicated. You have to learn fucking a rule system to count. It's terrible. Terrible system. Arabic. Arabic good, basically. A funny monk. I'm sad to have missed him. He had a gift for manipulating his features and his voice to imitate the other monks. His name was Jacob Carey. A man like that is wasted at an abbey. Right. Anyone else? Just, just going around looking at graves. I guess he's yelling across from me. <laughs> Mother Brunhilda. Abitasia? Oh, is that Abates? Abates? Brunhilda. That sounds like something from a Wagnerian opera. I'm sure it is. This is a grave situation. Oh. I doubt anyone's in that one. Given the age, I suggest she, I'd guess she's long been moved to the Abbey Crypt by now. You worried Father Gurna might try and punish us for this? God willing, we'll be done before he finds out. I remember a tweet where someone was appalled that they were teaching something Arabic in school or something and didn't realize the numerals were using an epic. I know, I think I also remember that. I think it might have been a politician said something like, you know, somebody tweeted them going like, what do you feel about them teaching us Arabic numerals? I was like, we should be learning European, American numerals. <laughs> it's a bit like when, um... They did that poll in America. I don't know what state or how wide ranging it was, but it was like, how do you feel about the current conflict in the Middle East? And do you think we should bomb this city? And it was um, like a few options. And one of them was, yes, we should bomb. And then the city they wrote was a fictional city from Aladdin. And like 60% of people said yes. <laughs> it's like, oh, fucking hell. Fucking hell. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be the same in every country. We're all as ignorant as each other. Agrabah, that's the one, yes. That's absolutely it. <laughs> we should be learning American numbers. So, you want me to speed it up? Sure. Why do you care about my back? Crashed. <laughs> Poor Otto. We are kind of using him. Oh, fucker. Oh, no, it's my gay friend. Fuck. Short, angry monk coming this way. He's going more southern as he talks. Ah, fuck. I better hide. Ah, uh, shit. Matthew's got not gonna like this. I could hide, but then I'd be putting Otto in a tough spot. Right. Um. We could kiss him. <laughs> I don't know. Um. You know that thing that happens in movies sometimes? Where we just pretend that we're just making out against a tree and then maybe he'll be too awkward and leave. Um, maybe he won't notice. He's short-sighted. You've got long hair. Both of us do. Ah, fucker. Um. 
We could kiss Matthew. He's not going to be happy with me if he has to deal with Matthew on his own. We can talk our way out of this. This could be the clue that unlocks the truth about who killed Lorenz. What's a little trouble if it saves an innocent man's life? Fuck, fuck, just do it. Just fucking... This will be remembered. We'll stick by our friend. He has a little smile. It's all well here. Uh... Hello. <laughs> right. Hi. He's very small. We could probably just pick him up. Cover... Got Otto, you circle around behind him with the shovel just in case he yells. Hit him with the shovel, that's it. Like, if, he's, if he fucking opens his mouth and takes a big breath, hit him with the shovel. But other than that... He seemed... I don't know. I guess we could take the really low road here, right? And say, hey, how was your fucking three hour long fucking sex session in the library with that other monk boy and then he'll go oh nothing to see here like but that feels bad <laughs> why would it not be why have you coerced the carpenter into digging up the late brother Gerhard to solve a mystery it's a it's a murder mystery it's already dead what is in that grave is not a fucking person it's some bones they're not alive it they don't give a fuck if memory serves father Gunnar expressly forbade your involvement in any mystery solving on Abbey premises as the vacator it is my duty to prevent from mischief such as this oh here we go Okay, now. Right. <laughs> okay, now. This one might have a chance of failing. Although both of these seem like they would... F they Both of these seem like they will succeed. Hang on, let me move my microphone. Not my microphone, my camera. Both of these seem like they have a chance to succeed. Persuade Mathau. But the top one isn't evil <laughs> so maybe we'll take the top one instead like the mischief you and Rudiger get a uh, Rudiger get up to in the library for hours and I had to fucking hear it although it got me ready for the nun I guess um oh thank god have you been coerced into this master Zimmerman you really think this twiggy arm painter is able to make me do something I don't want to do? This is very irregular, but, uh, how long has the abbot approved it's not my place to gainsay him? Clean up when you're done, please. Okay, that actually went very well. Now, we probably only have about five minutes before he fucking asks someone. Because <laughs> that's not going to work out. <laughs> He's not just going to keep that to himself. He's going to mention it. Is that going to cause problems for you? Uh... Yes, but who cares? <laughs> You've got convictions after all, huh? You're not just a wine slush. I, I think I could get down with you. Well, the sun won't wait. I better get back to digging. How fucking deep are we digging? It looked like it was a shallow burying. Did he bury it in the gray, in like the actual casket with him? Fuck me, I'm getting less and less sure. Um, Got a ways to go yet. Why don't you take a look around? Oh, Jesus. Six foot in it. Yeah, but I thought he, the guy had only dug down like two feet. I don't even know what a foot is. What is oh, what's a foot? A foot is 12 inches, but I don't know what that is in my head. Like, what the fuck is an inch? Um, I have a ruler somewhere, <laughs> I'm sure. An inch is like... It's like roughly that, isn't it? Is it like two and a half centimeters or something like that? I can't really do the conversions in my head. A thumb. What, that's an inch? That's a fucking big... My, th my thumb's really small. My thumb's always been that small. 
Anyway. A foot is roughly the size of one foot. Is it? I'm a size 12. The end part. Of, like this part. The last joint on a thumb. That That's about two and a half centimeters, maybe. Is that where it comes from? It's like your first two fingers put together. Yeah, that's about the same, I would say. Uh, fingertip is about two, a centimeter each, I think. Anyway. <laughs> A ninja has a very good personality. 12 equals 20, 12 inches to one foot. Well, I know that in the UK, at least, the method of me the unit that they measure feet in for shoes is not an inch. It is a barley corn. Which is insane, because nobody else has ever used that for anything. <laughs> like, I think UK foot measurements are in barley corns. Old measurements tend to be that imprecise. I know hands is a thing, right, for horses. Which, yeah, makes sense if it's feet and hands. And then a yard. A yard is like a span of arms outstretched. I've always, because I was forced into playing golf by my parents, mainly my dad, um, when I was very young, and fucking despised it. But they measure things in yards in golf. And so I was always taught that a yard, very roughly, is a man's stride. <laughs> Right? Like a man's walking stride is a is a yard. Very roughly. But I don't know if that's true at all. It's just what the old racist freaks in um in the country club said. Um everyone's foot is the same length as their forearm. Is that the thing uh the Vitruvian man says that, the proportions of the body? I know there's like some strange things like that, that proportions of the body are all kind of mathematically linked because you know it's efficient in it but um that makes sense my forearms my forearm is like a bit longer than my hand so like that makes sense i guess because my, my foot's quite long yeah these are a size 11 and a half i think the shoes i'm wearing right now and they, I, I have to like fasten them quite tight anyway <laughs> my ya yard is length of a belt uh in <laughs> 12th century Henry I standardized it as his nose to the thumb of his outstretched arm. What the fuck is up with the imperial system? The imperial system is fucking insane. Like, it's, it's genuinely deranged. Like, I don't know how anybody uses it. Older people here will still use Miles. Miles is one of the accepted ones, and it's still fucking strange. I don't get that at all. I don't know what a mile is. I can't visualize a mile. I don't know what... I know... I know it's like so many feet and it's like 1.6 kilometers or something like that. But I can't, if somebody says a mile to me, I don't have a visual thing in my brain that like shows me what a mile is, like a kilometer. So like, I don't, sometimes people like my dad or my mum will talk about miles away. And I'll be like, you'll have to modernize a little bit <laughs> so I'll understand what you're talking about. And they'll go, yeah, sorry, it's like a, this many kilometers away. They didn't have scientific measurements to create the metric so you can excuse them. That's true, I guess. But it, it's more that I don't know why people use them anymore. Like, who uses pints anymore? Or I, outside of alcohol for some reason. Or, um, you know, miles like older people here. Or in Britain. Or in America. It's just very strange. Gallons. Gallons is a weird one. I don't know what a gallon is. Is it more or less than a litre? Fahrenheit is also very weird. Miles work fine for distance? Yeah, but so do kilometers and they're just easier to learn. Like, I don't... Who fucking uses miles? <laughs> anyway. If you're under the age of 50 here, you do not know what a mile is. Sister Maria, the librarian, probably from before your time. I was a boy when she passed. My father spoke well of her, though. Said she reminded him of his own grandmother. I do? Yeah, but that's because you're in the UK, which is a fucking strange place. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, under here in Ireland. Because, I mean, we switched over to uh, metric units before I was born, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, everyone in the UK uses miles. It's old people here use miles. And I say old. Middle-aged and older. Like, again, my mum and my dad will sometimes slip up and say miles. And I'll just look blankly at them. And they'll go, sorry. <laughs> what the fuck are stone? I know this one. A stone. My pa Again, my pair. I, I know what I weigh in kilos. Vaguely. I do not know my uh, my my um, parents use pounds and stone. A stone is fourteen pounds. 
And a pound? Who fucking knows? I weigh in pounds, even though everyone uses stones here. Yeah, it's a it's a UK thing, and again, old people here use stones and pounds. Um, and Americans use pounds as well. I only know kilos, kilometers, centimeters, you know, all that kind of thing, really. I used to, the one thing that's hung on here, and now I use centimeters, but um, growing up, everybody used feet and inches for height and nothing else. Like I said, I don't really have a concrete image in my brain of what an inch is or a foot, but I don't, for some reason, we would all say like five, six, five, seven, five, eight, five, nine for, for, for height. Um, like I used to say I was five, eight or five, seven or something like that. Uh, it turns out I'm slightly taller than I thought I was, but I would still, now I just go by centimeters. I say like, I'm 176 or whatever I am. Centimeters for the height of a human baffles me for some reason. Now, again, it did baffle me when I first started using it because I was like, nobody else uses this. But now I've noticed if you're under the age of about 25, people tend to use centimeters now. Again, it's sort of like a millennial thing to do feet and inches. I know my height and foot, but that's like the only Imperial I know is height. It was the same with me. That was the only one we used. Imperial is fine for these non-scientific uses, except Fahrenheit. That can get in the bin. Well, this is the same argument that everybody uses for Fahrenheit. Anytime somebody, an American comes in in an argument about Celsius v. Fahrenheit, they always say, it's just fine for non-specific uses, and it, it just feels better. It, it's how the weather feels rather than the scientific method. And it's like, that means nothing. What do you mean it feels a number? That, that means fucking nothing to me. Like... It, if I say it's 25 degrees out, that feels warm. That doesn't mean anything. If you say it's 100 degrees out, it feels warm. That means less to me than anything. I don't know what that means. I refuse to learn non-metric. There's a TED Talks about how important metric is. I don't know any of it, to be honest. They say it's intuitive. It's like, no, it's not. It's just, it, They think it's intuitive because that's what you grew up with. It's like my parents. They intuit in miles because they learned miles intuitive is like measurements in general none of them are intuitive really it's just metric is more intuitive and so you know the intuitive thing is just what you are used to in japan they measure how many rooms are in a house by the number of tatami and that's one of the more normal ways of measuring here i don't know what tatami are <laughs> um when when was it last had foghorn leghorn and chat when mom tried to use Imperial, I talk over her. No, 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 metric, please. <laughs> anyway, only reason to use miles is because changing all the road signs would have been far too expensive. I think we changed road signs. Although, again, we were considered a developing country. I think the EU changed all our road signs for us. We went, yes, please, can we use metric? It's the modern thing. And then uh, the EU went, yeah, fine, here, have all these road signs. And we went, thank you. <laughs> I can't take this discourse seriously when pseudo penises is brief topic. Pseudo penises are natures are important in nature. If you like hyenas, which I do, then thank the pseudo penis because they are a very important part of their culture, society. I don't know if culture is the right word, but you know what I mean. I think that's the case in America. It's too hard, costly to change, so people like to believe it makes sense. I think that's why all the thermometers you'd have to change anyway. <laughs> She said she reminded him of his own grandmother, a sweet woman who loved the Lord. I expect the abbot will have her dug up soon. Uh, for the crypt? A ghoulish tradition, I've always thought. What's dead should remain buried. But then they don't have much space here. Many of the monks aren't long for death themselves, so... Oh, that's... yeah, that makes sense. There's a lot of people who think you should... If you're going to bury people, you should bury them vertically. Like a... like slots... <laughs> Maybe that could do it. Japanophile here. Are you um? Are you a weeb or an otaku? American engineering still uses imperial. Really, pounds per square inch. Ooh, I can't use any of their engineering journals or information. <laughs> Just seems strange. Now I guess if you were going full on scientific method, you'd use Kelvin for temperature, but that just seems insane. There's a push in the 70s, like actual legislation to move the US to metric, and people just refused. Yeah, no Japanophile. <laughs> Is that is that better <laughs> because weave is like a slur well i've reached the body but what is something wrong with it oh is there nothing there looks fine and oh here we go looks fine enough decay notwithstanding but someone stuffed a sack up under his ribs you know when you know two spanish words you're a tourist but japan is japanophile 
Japanophile sounds worse? Yeah, it does. Sounds like the people who watch. Sounds like the people who make the argument, you know. I'm um, actually, she's 4,000 years old. The first weather report using the Kelvin scale will cause mass panic. <laughs> it's like when I, I read that story, and this is real. I think it was, I, I can't remember which chain. It was either Burger King or McDonald's. But they were going to bring in a one-third pounder instead of a quarter pounder. They were going to, to comp I think it was Burger King, to compete with the quarter pounder in uh, McDonald's, they were going to bring out a one-third pounder. Right? So a bigger burger. And it failed massively. It was Wendy's, okay. It failed massively because people thought that one-third was less than one quarter. People don't understand things. <laughs> I'm bad at maths. I failed a lot of maths. I squeaked by. I squeaked by, right, in maths. I dropped down to ordinary level maths in my final exams the, a, a week before the exams because I knew I was going to fail and squeaked by with like a C3. I was fucking awful at maths. Uh, when you said it just then, it sounded less. A, a Mer North American spotted. <laughs> But four, four is more than three. It does sound worse, it does. A third pounder, it sounds a bit weird. But that's just because I think we're conditioned to think that quarter pounders are normal. What do we call it, a third pounder? Yeah, well, quarter pounder doesn't sound any less ridiculous. It's just that we're, we've grown up with that being a thing. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, looks fine enough. Decay notwithstanding, but someone stuffed a sack up under his ribs. Also, hello, Dave. Welcome. Good God, let me see. Is it full of cool treats? Ooh. Ooh! Is that blunt? It says blood. Arcane tools. They could serve no other purpose, of course. Sure. <laughs> it has er at the end of both words. It is a bit catchier, I guess. I like decimals, yes. Make it a 0 0.33 pounder. Or just use fucking metric again. What's a pound? I think a pound is something like 450 grams or something. So just sit, list it in grams. <laughs> list it in grams. Arcane tools. They could serve no other purpose. Tools? What do you mean? What would you use these tools for? What would you do with an infinitely recurring third of beef? <laughs> The 454 burger. List in ounces, for fuck's sake? What the fuck is an ounce? Like, what? what is an ounce? I have no idea what an ounce is. And I think there's two types of ounces. Like, there's fluid ounces as well. Nobody here. If you asked anybody here under the age of 70 what an ounce is, they would look at you blankly, I'm pretty sure. Uh, a fraction of a pound. Yeah, but how many? Like, how many? I, I don't really have a concept of how much a pound weighs in my hand. And also... What is... How many ounces in a pound? Grams or death, yes. <laughs> Weed smokers, no. Okay, that might be a thing. Because I don't know. Yeah, for some reason. I think a fluid ounce is the volume an ounce of water takes up. That kind of makes... Like a mill, then. 28.35 grams. I fucking hate it when a recipe says half a cup. I was like 20 when I tell... When I learned that that meant a specific measurement. And not just a cup. <laughs> I'm maybe like 18, 19 when I first started cooking. I was like, when they say that in recipes, in American recipes, that's like a specific thing. Like it's a it's a it's a specific cup. Like a measuring cup, and not just put a cup of stuff in. It's in it's ridiculous. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Magic. Two are plated with precious metals and engraved. I'll take one thirteenth of a Ginny's half, please. <laughs> Do you ever play it with precious metal? What cup, though? I still don't know. How many is it exactly? One second. One cup measurement in grams. One cup is 55 grams. Or I think it's ounce. I think it's... Oh, fuck me. Is it... I think it's volume rather than weight, right? So one cup in... In mils? It would be mils, right? One cup is 250. 36.5 millimeters. That is a cup. That is a cup of stuff. So if, if you get a 240-ish mil cup, that is what a cup is in measurements. It's bizarre. Weed smokers would be able to tell you how much one gram looks like. What a world. Yeah, it's weird. They, they cross over in that world. 
three sacked figgies worth, please. Two are plated with precious metals and engraved. A silver chased rod and a golden plate. That has blood on it. The rod has symbols of the Zodiac on it. The Zodiac Killer. Medieval version. The plate has some script I don't recognise. And there's a knife. And a knife. Seems ordinary enough, but together with the other two, buried here. Why would someone bury them here, together? I have no idea what grams look like, only what no grams look like. <laughs> because they're... For, because they're forbidden. Maybe it's jam. Wait, there's blood on some of the symbols on this rod. Dried to be certain, but not old. Ferenc tried cleaning this, but wasn't able to remove all of the blood. Could this be what was used to kill Lorenz? I think it's a red herring, but it's the only suspect we have. Um, I think this is probably just some sort of, like, I killed a ghost! <laughs> Sorry. What was he? He was Ker Ferenc as Kermit. I killed a ghost to learn my future. Which is bad, still. Stop killing goats. But also, I don't think the abbot will give a fuck. Um, who buried this here, anyway? I can't say, but it may be connected. Oh, What? None of this makes any sense. What's going on here anyway, Andreas? That's what I need that's what I need to figure out, Otto. Thank you for the help. Sext. Oh fuck. Right. I should find someone to eat with. I mean we don't really fucking know what we're doing though. Bloody silver rod. I mean, we... We haven't had enough time! Baron and the Nun. Yeah, that's fine. Occult hands. We never really got anything out of Lucky. Yeah. This has to be the grave of Lucky and Agnes's daughter. It could be Lucky. If it's not... Lucky, we don't know the motive, but Lucky, we can intuit from this that Lucky's daughter and child probably, and I will say, just for any conclusions that we get on this, I would say just a, a mild trigger warning for the rest of the game, right? Because there has been themes of things like sexual violence and rape and, uh, you know, murder and, you know... Off things like that. So, and the game is handling them very, very sensitively. But just a general content warning is probably a good thing to advise. But anyway, saying that, I think probably given the Baron's past, he may have uh, done something real bad to Lucky's wife. And then they had a daughter and maybe he got rid of them or maybe they died in childbirth. Something like that. That would be enough of a motive. And we saw him arguing. But we don't, we didn't investigate enough. You should come up with a permanent content warning. I might make graphics at some point for that kind of thing. I should talk with Lucky to find out what he was arguing about with the Baron. He never told us, though. May contain Drea. <laughs> um, wants to question me at Nones. That's next. Can we maybe eat with Lucky? Maybe he'll tell us open heart to heart? Maybe you should put that in your title, but no, Germ <laughs> We're in Germany. It makes sense. I'll give you bloody silver rod, you bloodsucker. In, Can in Canada, that means a big delicious breakfast with lots of maple syrup. Does Do Canadians eat as much maple syrup as stereotypes would have us believe? Because I know that one of the biggest heists in Canadian history was a maple syrup heist. Hello, Matasco. <laughs> sure, I must see. Um, the maple syrup heist where people stole millions of um, Canadian dollars worth of... Um, Maple syrup from a van or something. One second. Maple syrup heist. Uh, the way you connected these two anecdotes. <laughs> the great, it's not just the maple syrup heist. It is the great Canadian maple syrup heist, according to Wikipedia. The great maple syrup heist. Uh, the maple syrup heist of the century in French. Vol de syrup d'érable du Cicel? I don't know. I can't pronounce French. I'm terrible at it. Was the theft over several months in 2011 and 2012 of nearly 3,000 tonnes. That's another one. I don't really know what a tonne is. Um, although, no, that's metric tonnes, isn't it? So that would just be 1,000 kilos. Fair enough. Um, of maple syrup valued at $18.7 million in Quebec. Of course, it's Quebec. 
<laughs> the phil- facility was operated by the Federation of Kazakhstan. Kizeg- Adjusted for inflation, the heist is the most valuable heist in Canadian history. The most money stolen in Canada ever was the Great Canadian Maple Syrup Heist. That is very stereotypical and I find it very fun. (laughs) Back to game. (laughs) Let's go down to the lower abbey, I guess. Oh, fuck me. I know there was some lady that was selling syrup cheaper than the state allowed. Yeah, they have set prices, right? Same with alcohol. They have, um... State run off licenses or liquor stores, if you're North American. I'm going down to the liquor store, pick myself up a bottle of bourbon. Uh, off licenses or offies. Um, they have like state run ones there. Puppet History has a great episode on it. <laughs> Implied that you just went bazooki for syrup like blood star vampires. <laughs> I know, I one of the few Canadian national dishes I know is uh. Is it called maple snow? Where they just like pour maple syrup on fresh fallen snow and then eat it? Honestly, sounds not bad. <laughs> I'll be honest. Father Thomas. Go be with you, Andrea. Okay, we never went up to the mill. Should we talk to somebody at the mill? That's a snack, yes. <laughs> Lush. It honestly sounds kind of nice. Puppet hussy doesn't go well. Oh, that reply from Hughes Rosemary was a... Uh, Molasses flood. Oh, the the molasses flood. I've heard of that as well. So there was also a beer flood, I think, in medieval England. There's been a lot of weird food floods. If you, <laughs> I've listened to the QI podcast a few times. Pussy. Ooh. Ooh. Plussy or nothing, please. <laughs> Sorry. Else. Pet Staub. I have not seen you. Hello. Who are you? Pet this freakish looking dog. This looks a lot like one of my parents' dog. Like, uh, my parents have three whippets, and they are freaky-looking nightmares. 100% would not go out back to eat maple snow with Treya ever. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had maple syrup. Emma asked me this recently, because she got some... I, I She forced me to make her porridge yesterday, because she was craving porridge. So I was sitting there making porridge, and she put syrup on it. I don't know if it was maple syrup. She's saying, oh, maybe I should have maple syrup next time. And I went, I don't know, I don't really know what that tastes like. And she was like, what? How have you not had maple syrup? It's like, I don't know. I think I've had golden syrup, but that's different. Not had maple syrup. I don't, I, I don't know. Can you buy it in shops? <laughs> I, I'm assuming you can. You should make a porridge drawer like my grand when she was a child. I don't know what that means. Like a drawer you store porridge in? You famously hate things that are fun and sweet, so you probably wouldn't appreciate it. I can't imagine I would, because I I don't like syrup in general. I don't like sweet things. I don't like desserts or sweets. So, I don't think I would like it. A drawer you store porridge in. Hello, Barlow. Welcome. If it's available in Switzerland, it probably is not. I imagine it is. Why is the dog called Dust? Is that what Staub means in German? Staub means dust, maybe. Well, it it looks a bit dusty, maybe. I, my, uh grandfather had a dog called Dusty. It was a West Highland Terrier. Staub equals dust. I'm learning. <laughs> Did I just cut out bears to munch? Oh. Oh. What, like... Oh. <laughs> Hello, Paul. You're weird looking. Um. Hello. Paul, right? I don't think we've actually talked before. I'm Andreas. Oh, I'm Andreas. I'm staying with the Gertners. But you're not a farmer. Why are you living with farmers? Oh, children. Um, like the Scottish porridge drawer. What? Porridge drawer. Sorry, if you're American, I should be inclusive. Porridge. They say it weird and it sets me on edge. (laughs) Uh, fried porridge. Oh, that actually looks not bad. (laughs) Fried porridge. A drawer full of porridge. What the fuck? <laughs> what is this? I have never had these. I thought they called it oatmeal. They do. And so when they're forced to say the word porridge, they say it strangely. Porridge. I'd like some porridge, please. Thank you and God bless America. <laughs> it's like when they have to say Jaffa Cakes. Have you ever heard an American say Jaffa Cakes? Or twat? It's, it's, it gives me psychic damage. <laughs> When you give, when you, Americans say Jaffa Cakes, which is insane, and then they say Twat, 
instead of trash. It's very weird. Jaffa cakes. <laughs> anyway, this is what I'm looking at. Fried porridge. That looks kind of good. That looks kind of good. Having visited my old crinkly... Uh, what the fuck is this? I've discovered a new to me anyway Scottish object. The porridge drawer. Some farms used to make a week's worth of porridge at a go and keep it in a, in a drawer. Oh god, that fucking... That sounds horrible. That's horrible. Porridge isn't typically made from oats here? What else would you make it from? What would you make porridge from if it isn't from oats? That's fucking sad, I know. Um, what? No, that's... What? <laughs> Do they have a weird version of porridge? American porridge. Uh, wheat porridge. Wheat. In the US, oat and wheat porridge can both be called hot cereal. What? <laughs> In, it's more commonly called oatmeal in the US and Canada. Rolled oats are commonly used in England, oatmeal in Scotland, and steel cuts in Ireland. I don't know which one we got. I thought that's grits. I think grits is like, grits are different. What are grits? Grits are like a Southern US thing, right? That's cornmeal, that's it. Grits actually look kind of nice. Um, hang on. Grits are like a savory porridge, which I could get down with, I think. Grits are a type of porridge made from boiled cornmeal. I think you have them with like salt and pepper. That looks kind of nice to me. I'd have grits. I think grits look kind of cool. <laughs> grits sound yum. I've never seen grits. I don't even know where you'd buy grits here. But like, they have butter in them and fucking... Yeah, you have them with like bacon and eggs. And some wholemeal toast. That looks good. That looks really nice. Looks a bit like hummus. That looks very like hummus, that picture. And I fucking love hummus. Oh, hummus is good. Hummus on some pita bread. Oh. Italians call it polenta. Polenta. Oh, yeah, it basically looks like the same thing. Polenta is flour, uh, corn into flour meal. Yeah, it's the same thing then. Fair enough. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Maybe I'll have some grits. Maybe I'll try and find grits. We call it polenta too. It might be a regional thing. They're letting me board with them while I work in the Abbey's scriptorium. Why am I talking to this irritating little child? A variation of porridge in Switzerland is called Bürcher Müsli, which is essentially cold porridge with fruits and stuff. That sounds all right. The right wing are very angry about oats at the moment. Why? Is it something to do with Quaker oats? Because the Quaker oats sometimes donate to charities and stuff. Have they donated to a charity that the right wing don't like? Today we have covered porridge and units of measurement. Glad to be a subscriber. I'm sorry. Plenta is what it'll be called in Ireland. Because we're EU boys. EU boys! Again, I, I liked seeing that... Uh, that Because the EU has a lot of problems. But it was funny seeing that um, graph of like... Public perception of the EU. And us being by far and away at the top. Because Ireland know what we'd be without them. <laughs> You're a monk. I'm an artist. Oh, like, you do drawings? Drawing, painting, calligraphy. If it goes in a book, I can put it there. Oh, is that... Do you get money? What? The Abbey pays me. It's a job, just like being a miller. But also, it's a calling. I didn't... My dad says... My dad says drawing's stupid. That it's not worth anything. He said AI would take over my job in a couple of years anyway, and that I should learn to code instead. Uh, do you like to draw? Yes. More than anything, but I have to do it when Dad can't see. I draw naughty things. I draw things that no one should ever see. I draw things like the Virgin Mary and my dad having relations. He gets mad at me. Uh, my dad doesn't like some of the things I do either. That's why I don't tell him. I'm a wine slut, you know. <laughs> oh, God. 
good influence achievement. <laughs> there we go. This is not a good influence. <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? It depends. <laughs> What's the secret? If it's about anything other than the drawing, I don't want to know. Sometimes I draw in the ruins in the meadow where Dad can't see. Dad. <laughs> He's a fast child. Where Peter can't see. Uh, the Romans love would have been honored. They loved defacing monuments. Have you ever seen screen like fucking pictures? I almost said screenshots. Have you ever seen pictures of Pompeii? It's fucking filth. I don't know what that means. I just like to draw people fucking. Oh, just don't worry about it. <laughs> what do you draw? I told you. Cats mainly. Mum. I don't know. Stuff. Have you ever... Have you ever wondered what it would be like if a cat was a girl? If a cat and a girl were sort of merged into each other. Like a girl, but like with fur all over her. And then some ears of a cat and maybe the nose and some teeth. I feel like I've invented something. Dot, dot, dot. I probably shouldn't be talking to you about this. My dad wouldn't like it. You're probably right. I'm going to try and forget about the other stuff. <laughs> Until later, Paul. And hey, keep drawing, all right? Unless it's cursed. I will. Bye. Do you want to see my OC? Hello, Els. Elsie. Good morning, ah. Forgive me, I've forgotten your name. My name is... And... Uh, fuck it, we'll flirt. I'm wounded. And then we lower our glasses, we're not wearing glasses, and we wink. Oh. <laughs> oh, me, Andreas. Um. I hope I may call you Elsie. No! <laughs> I mean, no, please. Not where my husband can hear me. Oh, this is giving some bad vibes. Gonna be real bad vibes. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> that point during Christmas where Weird Uncle Jay and starts pouting off. <laughs> um. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Just suspicious of men's attentions. Um. You ought to lighten the fuck up. Not everyone. I, um... I hope that Clara and Eva had an artist boarding with them. That must be very exciting. Uh, for them or for me? Oh, we don't... She's already said no. Let's not be a creep. <laughs> like, clearly something fucky is going on in this household. Again, content warning. <laughs> They've treated me very well. Perhaps Eva more than Clara, hmm? Oh, I, I only meant living on a farm amongst the town people and all of the sex. Isn't it very lively? Um. Oh, Jesus. Only will ill Peter wakes in the night and can't find the chamber pot. Fucking disgusting. Um. Only when Peter starts raving about the miller's toll. Oh, dear. Oh, is this the Miller? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Ursula brings some joy to the household, though. Such a lovely little girl. I talked to your son, Paul. He seemed like a good kid. It wasn't weird. It wasn't weird. Just because I'm a grown man talking to a child out in the middle of nowhere. It wasn't weird. Paul is darling, but so shy. You can have him if you like. I pray the Lord may someday bless us with a daughter. Mm. Oh, God. Else. Have you finished with your gabble? There's work that needs doing. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I have to get to me labours. Of course, I apologise if I bothered you. Until later, Mistress Mullerin. I'm assuming that means Miller in Germany. Until then... Right, well, that was a very unpleasant conversation all around. Hello. Oh, you're fucking handsome. You look like medieval Kurt Cobain. Morning. You're... Morning. <laughs> Fuck it, he's American. Morning. You're the Gertner's boarder, aren't you? 
How could you tell? You look like a man who understands the power of appearances. Oh, he's a fucking wine slut as well. Mm -hmm. Muller is one of the most common German last names. Muller Rice. Oh, I fucking hated Muller Rice as a kid. My dad was had always stocked Muller Rice in the fridge. And so if there was nothing else in the house, there would be Muller Rice. And it was worse than no food. Fucking awful. You look like a man who understands the power of appearances. Quite unlike the Gertners. Uh, they're rustic. They're farmers. You expect them to... They're rustic. The only one among them with a mind is Eva. Now there's a smart girl. Fucking frog spawn. <laughs> How is she, by the way? She's fine, my. I'm only curious. She used to bring their bear leaf to me, but Peter insists on delivering it now. I'm very sleazy. <laughs> Can you tell that I'm very sleazy? <laughs> A shame. I'd shown some curiosity about the mill. I'd hope to foster that. Hmm. <laughs> Never seen Muller rice? Muller rice is basically yogurt with chunks of rice in it, right? One second. Muller rice. It's it's like a rice pudding almost. Oh, I can smell it from this picture alone. It looks like fucking gloopy. Des it, it looks like rancid gum. <laughs> and it just, it tastes worse. It's awful. Oh, it looks like if you came into a bowl and it curdled. It's horrible. Horrible, horrible food. <laughs> oh no. I haven't seen such a marvelous windmill since my time in Flanders. You see, I'm well traveled, unlike you, you rube. There are many in the farmlands along the Lee, particularly west of Ghent. That does not look good on the inside. <laughs> ah, the Lee. A lovely uh, range of hills. I think that's a river, isn't it? Right, Flanders' famous hills. You fucking moron! She's the only windmill in Bavaria. Did you know that? That cannot possibly be true, can it? I guess you don't really associate windmills with Germany. Constructed in exact and detail from Dutch specifications. <laughs> Dino DNA. Sorry, that's the only southern accent I can do, apparently. <laughs> it was full of holes, so we plugged it with Dino Frog DNA. <laughs> the gem of the Alps, and none of the incurious dolts here can appreciate it. Except you. I suspect they have more urgent matters on their hands. We had Yogo? I once heard of a trick to s how to pronounce you umlaut. Say e and then shape your mouth like you're whistling. E. <laughs> Sorry. That that that's one of the most entertaining things I've ever done. I really enjoyed doing that. Not for you, but for me. You. <laughs> I'm going to be doing that all day. <laughs> I suspect they have more merchant matters. I should be going until later. Until then, then, Mailer. Right, so he's awful. He's the worst man in the world. We get it, right? What's this? Glass windows, probably made in low countries. That's the Netherlands, right? What else is the low countries? I don't know of any others. I, I just think of the Netherlands when that phrase comes up. Okay, what? fuck me, I don't know. Can we talk to Lucky again? Where's Lucky? Lucky's fucking gone. Can I go into the Steinmer house or wherever it is? Lucky? Lucky? Agnes. One second. Go into here. People. Where's Lucky? Lucky, 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 Lucky. Nope. Lucky's not there. I just want to check. Lucky. What's his full name? Lucky Steinauer. Stonemason of Tassing. Husband of Agnes. Okay. Let's talk to Agnes. Netherlands just means lowland, yes. Good day. Oh, fuck me. I don't know. Good day, Andreas. Did you need something? Uh. May I eat with you and Lucky? That's a way of getting into it, right? May I eat with you and Lucky? 
That's bold of you, Andreas, considering how you've treated my husband. Oh, fuck. Oh, not gonna happen. I didn't mean anything on it, of it, I was just asking questions. Fuck. You are no fool, Andreas Miller. Christians can get innocent people and innocent men killed. <laughs> you should go. Oh, fuck. Okay, so we don't get to eat with Agnes and Lucky. That's bad. The Netherlanding story. I don't think that's a great movie. <laughs> I think the nether ending story is kind of boring. Lucky. There we go. Let's talk to you instead. Andreas. Good day, Lucky. Do you have a moment to talk? Mikey, quick. <laughs> okay. I love what my, my partner doesn't like it as much. It's been years since I've seen it, to be fair. So maybe I'd like it now. But I remember finding it kind of boring as a kid. It's just, I like the bit where the horse dies. Where the horse gets sad to death. That's kind of fun. But other than that, I don't really remember that much of it. There's that dog-faced dragon as well. Falcor, maybe? It's not Falco, that's the singer. I think it's Falcor. That is alright. And the rock people. Oh yeah, you said that before. I think I did. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the grave of two innocents. I saw you leave flowers there. Who are they for? That's not your business. I won't talk to you about this, Andreas. And don't ask me again. I found the note you left in the forest. We're just gonna ask again. Remember the girl, one grave for two innocents, the red bird flies, Matan's chapter. I think what's happened is somebody has sent out letters to all of the people who have a grudge against the Baron, trying to goad them into killing someone, into killing the Baron. So it's just who, who actually did it, right? Maybe it's a roguelike, maybe it changes. Like Clue, <laughs> that movie. Um, fuck, I don't know. Do you know where it came from? Now. Glare stoically. <laughs> now that's not my vibe. Maybe I can wait him out. He doesn't scare me. He does a little bit. Look at him. Look at the fucking arms on that boy. <laughs> What's the worst he can do? Frown? He can probably punch you very hard. Glare stoically. That's all you're getting from me, Andreas. Continue glaring. You keep looking at me like that, you're gonna regret it. I'm Danny Dyer. Glare with unnerving intensity. Yes! Keep glaring. What's that supposed to do? Scare me? You're just a wine slut. Just answer my question. Fine, if it'll get you to leave. I found it with me tools the night before Rothvogel was killed. I don't know what it means. Why don't you keep it since you care so much? You done now? Isn't that the grave in the forest? I saw you leave flowers there. Who were they for? That's not your business. I won't talk about it. Okay. Perhaps another time. Until then. Right. We could probably go back to the scriptorium. Maybe we could figure something out there? Maybe somebody knows some form of fucking gossip about, like, dead baby and dead wife or something. Oh, Jesus, I don't know. I think I fucked this badly is the problem, right? <laughs> like, I think what, I, what has happened here is I have completely fucked this. We can't talk to Thomas. Let's take a quick look up at the meadow. No, up at the, at the at the abbey. See if anybody can answer some questions there. And if not, we'll just go fucking eat with somebody and meet with the archdeacon. I mean, it's not going to go well. It's really not. Can we go into the abbot's house at all? We can go into the guest house. We can talk to her again. We'd say anything to her. No, nothing. There's that freakish, horrible dog who looks like he's a demon. Anything up here? No, the abbot house is locked as always. Lovely. Ah, oh, Nightbot, stop being a simp. <laughs> uh, 
Um, let's not specifically. I don't think it's all right focusing on a jellyfish. I imagine a jellyfish would just sort of absorb urine. Have we ever gone into the shrine? I don't know if we have. I don't think we have. Brother Matthew maintains the shrine along with some of the sisters who paint badges for pilgrims. Yeah, but was there anything in here? A reliquary containing the hand of St. Moritz, which is said to have once held the Holy Lance. The Holy... Is the Holy Lance... We learned this from... The game with the demons. What was it called? Puzzle game with demons? Sharp-faced man? Sharp, sharp-faced little man. French boy. And it was a demon. Fuck, what was it called? What was that game called? Was anybody here when I played it? <laughs> I can't remember what that game was called. But I think the Holy Lance was in um that game. And it was like the thing that stabbed Jesus in the side. And made that like fun gash. I've got Blanky now. <laughs> Let's go to the... The council, thank you. That would have bothered me immensely. Yes, it was the council. That was what it was. Um, Lance of Longinus. Longinus. Let's go to the scriptorium. We can talk to those pricks. Maybe they'll recognize the handwriting. Something like that. I don't know. One of, one of these people will know something. Ferenc, do you have anything else to say about yourself? May I help you with anything? I mean, I found some fucking stuff. <laughs> I mean... Uh, so, <laughs> Otto Zimmerman and I were digging up Brother Gerhard's grave the other day. Oh? We found some interesting items. A knife, a plate, a rod, all engraved with zodiac symbols. How curious, Gran is the official translator of Dreyas Gibberish. <laughs> Uh, these are all magical tools. Ritual tools. Are they? Oh my. Stone-faced. What are they used for? How should, how should I know? One of the brothers must be playing an especially ill-advised joke. Likely brother Guy. He has no respect for anyone, deceased or otherwise. You're a consummate Latinist, aren't you, Brother Ferenc? Perhaps you're familiar with the phrase Hic Iset Gerhardt? Here lies Gerhardt. This is preposterous. I will speak to the abbot about this harassment at once. What a wonderful idea. And yet, and yet, you're still standing here. Grrr. Yes. You are correct. The knife, plate, and rod are mine. I hid them for fear of the baron. He was pressuring me to perform a ritual, as you know. I believed, foolishly, I see now, that if the objects could not be found, I could persuade him to give up his obsession with using them. He did put you in a difficult position. I mean, it's all a bit of fun. He did, but no harm came of it in the end. And now, well... I see. And how do you explain the blood? The what? On the silver rod. It's obvious you tried to clean it off and it stained the engravings. It's my blood. That's all. Have you ever seen? Have you ever read the illustrated manuscript? One man and one jar if. <laughs> something. something bad happened with the rod, and that's all I want to go into it. The result of a benign ritual invoking the aid of angels. I see what you are implying, and you cannot truly believe I killed the Baron. Can you? Hmm. Aren't you going out at four? Oh yeah, fuck. Well, whatever. I'll go another 15 minutes. <laughs> I'll go till... What time is it? I'll go till five and then run. <laughs> um. <laughs> you have a compelling motive. He was threatening to report you. I would never! I am a man of God! It's already 12.50 a.m., don't worry. <laughs> This is a matter of the Archdeacon to decide, as the abbot has tried to impress upon you. Please go, Andreas. I cannot talk about this any longer. I have a few more questions. Be quick about it. You rushed... What did you hide? Pardon? And why were you sneaking about the scriptorium? I fucking work there, you prick. 
I can ask questions too. What was so important you had to be late for terse? Let us seek a common understanding as two brothers in Christ. That is a fucking cop-out answer, you prick. Please, let's. I love to understand things. Grr. The scriptorium is my domain and you are a guest here. <laughs> There's the word germacy in your title. What else would you call germ? <laughs> Sorry. And so as long as that is true, I do not answer to you. Okay, it's just suspicious. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, why aren't you the abbot? It's an elected position. Are you not better suited to the job? That's not... I will not discuss this with you! Are we done here? Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> right. Bless you, Master Mailer. That was a heated blessing. It's not good. <laughs> Spied red animal clitorises were discussed way too long this stream. I barely talked about clitorises this stream. And it's interesting that spider monkeys have, you know, long ones. Clitori. We've discussed this. It's the clitorati. <laughs> Scriptorium. Anyone in here? No one. Anyone in the library? No. Okay, so we've talked to him about it. We've tried to talk to Lucky. But I feel like that's all we're getting out of Lucky. Matilda. I mean, we're leaving Matilda alone. And Piero. We haven't really talked to Piero. It could be for... I don't think it's for... I think it's probably Lucky. But I don't have the evidence to get Lucky convicted. That's kind of the problem. <laughs> I, what did it call them? What did it call Spider Monkey's clitorises in the Wikipedia page? Or not in the Wikipedia page, in that Twitter thread. P pendulous. That's it, pendulous. That's notable, I would say. Okay, I guess we'll go fucking eat with somebody. My notebook isn't helping here. I, If we can accuse Lucky, we might. But I don't think we have enough evidence. I think we needed to go harder with Lucky. I think we needed to maybe not piss him off enough. To maybe get some information out of his wife. Because his wife fucking hates us. I swear your voice goes up two octaves when you read words like clitoris. <laughs> it's been pointed out on this stream and in real life that my voice goes up when talking to Emma. Like, a, like at least an octave. Um, can I... I think my voice just goes up and down when talking about different things. Werner. Who's Werner again? Oh, we haven't met them. Can I do a Werner Herzog impression? No. Hello, you're the uh, artist from Nuremberg. That is horrific. <laughs> Andreas Mail Mailer. Yes. Oh, he's the doctor. Ah, yes, that was it. Mailer. Someone mentioned you dabbled at university for a year or two. Funny. You're staying with the Gertners, yes? The Abbey does not have a guest house, you know. Um, or does have a guest house. I'd rather stay in town. The Abbey's a bit rigid. Ha, huh, why should you care? They are not your rules. At least the monks eat well. The food in Tassing is as miserable as its people. What are you doing here then? Building up my contacts. People of merit do pass through here occasionally, unlikely as though it may seem. Oh god, kazoo. And it's fucking a link. Pink! Oh no! Not pink! Oh! Uh, after this conversation then, we might end it there. You didn't have the connections to find a position in a big city, then. That or you weren't good enough. Excuse me. I will not be insulted in my own home by a godforsaken artist. I thought we were bantering. It's just bent, lads! Lads, 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 lads. I don't care. Leave. Until later. Hmm, until later. Couldn't have even been, like, old pink. <laughs> right, so we've instantly fucked things up with stolts. Who can we eat with? Who can we eat with? I guess we'll eat with somebody at the start of next stream, because I do need to go. Let's do You know what, then fine. Let's that's where the, the game ends today. I'm really enjoying... We will finish it next week. Or ne tomorrow, probably, I'm going to say. I'm going to finish this tomorrow. Take a fucking joke, mate. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, we're going to be finished that game tomorrow. I'm really enjoying it. I think I have fucked up this investigation and we're going to get somebody innocent killed. <laughs> so, looking forward to that. Uh, this is the kazoo. Oh my god, I really don't like pink. <laughs> Do I know this song? Are you going to play the Red Riding again? Yes, I will be playing... Once I'm finished Pentiment, I'll be playing the G-Force game from Disney. And that cursed Red Riding Hood game. Genuinely cursed games. <laughs> One of the worst songs ever. Fuck, she's so... She is like... She makes music as bad as Britney Spears, but for people who hate Britney Spears, right? <laughs> like, people who were like, oh, I'm, I'm not like the other girls. I don't like mainstream pop. And then just made worse mainstream pop. <laughs> hate Pink.